Mr. Russ Jones. I am extremely impressed with what's going on today. There's a UFC, one of the biggest fights ever in the history going on, and look at this place. Good. Amazing. I mean, make sure you hold that mic close. Looks pretty good. There man. you go. I mean, you know, you got a mouth like Kelly, you can hold it out here, but we know you're, you're very modest and well spoken. I'm, guy. Taping, I'm taping the UFC, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we're we're we don't want no We're having a ham and eggs in the morning with all the fighters. A ham and eggs? I I'm thought I was cooking. Well, that's fine. We're having ham and eggs. <laughs> you want to put a little sriracha on it? That's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, but tell me what it was like. Tell me how you two, uh, uh, how you guys got going on this. Well, I, I mean, I, I was a boxing fan, and it was really a hard transition for me to go from boxing to UFC or to MMA because I didn't understand it. I remember the first fight I saw a guy over the top of someone else, and he was pounding on him, pounding on him, the guy on the bottom one. Got choked out. Didn't get it. I, I had no idea. Since then, slowly I've learned and learned and learned. But I used to watch Muhammad Ali, Leonard Spinks, uh, Michael Spinks, and all those boys. And this is the wave of the future, and I, I get that. And uh, and now I enjoy it very much. How'd you hook up with this knucklehead, the wise ass? Uh, probably location more than more than anything. I mean, uh, well, God I, bless you. Yeah. I used to bring boxing matches. I mean, I didn't bring them out here, but I, I was a supporter of boxing. And then in the late 90s, it kind of shifted. And Kelly, the first time I saw him, he told me he'd kick my ass. Yeah? Yeah, he did. <laughs> I did? never fought. <laughs> You're not bigger than I am. I, yeah. That and, doesn't matter, does it, Miss Sport? <laughs> Kelly, you've done sport. a phenomenal job on the matchmaking here, and we've said that over and over. Champ and I, uh, and Champ's, you know, he, he's good at what he does. Uh, what did you look for when you were searching for these young athletes that nobody knows as of until tonight? Well, I mean, first and foremost, when you're competing with other shows, it's tough. Uh, we we're competing with RFA was last week. There was a BFC going on tonight, same night. And we're comp we only live three hours from Denver, so we're competing with events there, trying to bring fighters in. So all, all you can do is put on a very good show, good performance. Russ has always been uh, high on treating the fighters right. And honestly, that's what makes the that's matchmaking an job. Look at this yeah. place. That's I what mean, makes the wow. matchmaking job easy. When fighters want Where to were you when, I, when we started fighting, huh, buddy? Where were you then? And then giving away those big pieces well, of jewelry? You know what? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what Scott Cutbert just told me. He said, he looked at our card, he goes, you know, we just had an RFA in Lincoln March 7th, and you guys yeah. got three of the top amateurs I in the remember Midwest. That one. And you know, and that's when I said, well, it's because Russ has made these guys want to fight. They call Absolutely. us. And look at Dwight's like, Dwight was just offered a, a pro contract, and yeah. Dwight said, I want to take some time. I only fought this time because these, these guys have been wanting me to fight for a while, and I wanted to fight for them. And he but started I, here. And he, he wanted he to give back here. to you guys, you know, at 9-0. And, and tell me, uh, how has it changed you as a person being involved in this sport? I mean, it's just great to see the fighters develop. I mean, we got a, the cool thing is we've got a lot of fighters from North Latin that want to fight. And so that's actually what makes our shows. But I think if we treat the fighters fairly well, then the fighters from Omaha and Denver and Lincoln and, and Kansas City, hopefully, and hopefully further out than that, Absolutely. the amateurs will want to come because we'll pay their expenses. I'll make them breakfast. And, you know, or you'll make the commentator make a breakfast. Jake one sprinkle other. sriracha <laughs> sauce on your eggs. Whatever the hell it is. Absolutely. But, I mean, these guys, they all have a story. And that's why you guys do such a great job at showing the future. Thank you. Because the future is uh, what, what's going to happen. I mean, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got, your, you're, you got, you've, got, you've got the beat on them. Yeah, and, you know, it's almost like when you watch some of the biggest shows, you know what to expect. I mean, these are your most cal elite caliber uh, athletes, and you know what's going to happen. If you watched them long enough, you're getting to learn these beautiful, what I just said a minute ago, vessels. And how important and how privileged, I mean, really is it for you guys to be a big, huge part of that, their future championships? I mean, we had a kid come from Colorado to fight, and we had another guy scratch out, apparently never scratched before, right? And I felt so bad I made damn sure that his family that got here was covered on expenses. I paid him. Absolutely. Because because the kid has nothing but has a future with MMA, MMA future. And we are the future of MMA. Damn. And on that note, you're hired. You're out. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to Mike Kendall ringside for our right next on. championship belt.